Will we ever have a long distance trip that something doesn't go wrong on? I don't know. Okay, to be fair, we made it to Colorado just fine. We didn't have any issues until we got to Colorado and then we discovered that we had a, a bunch of truck issues, just kind of like one after the other that ended up costing us a couple thousand dollars before we headed on to Phoenix. After a few great weeks in Kansas City, it was time for us to move on and we did choose to leave a little bit early just because it was kind of different with the coronavirus. So we actually hit the road a week early and headed out to Denver that we could spend a little extra time playing in the mountain snow. Well, Merry Christmas! It is Christmas night and we are rolling out of Kansas City heading for Denver. So uh, yeah, a very odd Christmas planning logistical wise, but very fun. Now it is time to move on to Denver and we're going to get a head start because we have reservations tomorrow and we don't travel very fast. Dreams of green and filled with bliss, life is so much more than this. So where do you go when nothing's like Okay, so we made it to Colorado. We are here, checked into the campsite. There's Wendy in the background, all that kind of stuff. It's actually just starting to snow. A fairly uneventful trip all the way here, thankfully. If you guys have seen the last, one of the last videos about our oops moment where we got stuck in the mud, if you haven't seen it, go check it out because it's hilarious. hilarious. It was not hilarious at the time, but looking back on it, it was just kind of like a stupid mistake. A lot of mud up in the wheel wells. Now there was some very smart and astute commenters that said, hey, you might want to check your wheels and stuff. And everybody was really concerned about the trailer and I did and everything seems to be fine. Now the truck may be a different story though. As we're pulling into Denver, made it all the way into Denver, probably a castle rock. So we're coming into the south side of Denver. Uh, I get an ABS light that comes on and my traction control turns off and it kicks me out of cruise control. This is what it looks like here. So those are my lights. And I start to hear this noise in the wheel. It's a grinding sound and I'm like, oh God. Let me see if I can get it to do it. If you guys can probably can't hear that. As I'm pulling out of the park here, we are on our way to the local Ram dealership because by golly, I'm pretty sure it's a bearing. I've had several of these happen in different vehicles over the years and they distinct sound, especially worse when you turn. And sure enough, whenever we turn, oh, I'm sure you can't hear it, but it's, it sounds like metal, you know, and it pops. Because, you know, this is NOP and it's real talk. There's always something. And we're on the way to the dealership. Maybe it was all the dirt and, uh, and mud and junk that got up in there from having to pull Wendy out of that big mud hole. Maybe not. We're going to find out. But um, yeah, we'll let you guys know. We don't know if it was in fact the mud that caused the issue in the truck or not. We did go directly to a car wash the very next day after we had the mud incident from that last video that you saw. But it could have contributed to it maybe didn't i know that some of you are going to blast us for going with another extended warranty but we just we feel better we feel like we have a more peace of mind with it john works full time while we're on the road and i am not a car mechanic so being able to take it somewhere and have someone else deal with the problems is the way that we have chosen to handle our car maintenance situation so i'm not complaining about our maintenance costs or cost of repairs it just comes with the territory of traveling on the road and it's something that gives us more peace of mind if a warranty is not for you 
then you don't have to get a warranty. The hub assembly was what needed to be replaced and it was covered under the warranty. So we had to drop the truck off for a couple of days. And while it was there, they did the front two brakes because it was deemed unsafe to drive on the road. And John can do brakes, he does all of our brakes usually, but we did the front brakes at the dealership. It cost-wise, it turned out to be very similar. And then we also had some maintenance stuff that we had to get done. 1,209, 50. There was some maintenance on the coolant system that was coming due and it just comes with having a diesel truck. Diesel trucks are just more expensive to maintain. So obviously the maintenance stuff is not covered in the warranty. So we had a pretty penny to pay just in getting the truck like ready to go for the rest of our journey to Phoenix. But we left it there a couple of days and then we spent some time at Chatfield Lake. We got to explore a little bit. It is gorgeous there uh, and it snowed and the kids were ecstatic. So was the dog. <laughs> They're everywhere. Is what I love about Colorado. So last night it dumped, well it didn't dump let's be honest, it's like two three inches maybe of snow and you would think that it would be just so cold and miserable but it's gorgeous. There's sunshine out and my kids are loving the snow. Man we miss Colorado. I love it here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Oh, Cinder, did you have so much fun? Did you have so much fun? Okay, excuse me because I look really gross, but if you need to take showers outside of your rig, they're gonna charge you for them. <laughs> so it's 50 cents for the first three minutes, and then it's a quarter for each minute and a half afterwards. We don't have hookups right now, we just have electricity. They don't have water or sewer available this time of year. But as you can see, I am a hot, hot mess right now. And this would not come clean in like a military shower in the RV. So comment below if you've been on the road and you'd had to pay for your showers, whether it was at a state park or at a truck stop. Okay, all done. I'm going to brave the cold now. Um, good news, the shower was very hot. However, there was like little to no pressure. So, uh, also, 12 minutes turns out to be quite a long time for a shower, even though it didn't sound like it was going to be. So we got the truck back after a couple of days. Everything was fine. We paid for it. It ran great. He brought it back and he did the back brakes himself. He also did a few other maintenance-y things that needed to be done that the dealership offered to do that John was perfectly capable of doing himself. So we did save a little bit of money there. But after we got all of that done, we were like, it's finally time to go up into these mountains, back into our old stomping ground and have some fun in the snow. Old familiar friend. 285. What do you think? Here <laughs> old stomping grounds, huh? Hey, are you ready? Gonna Nicole? stay in all right. this moment. Go get those runners. Yeah. Gonna lay here on <laughs> the grass. I don't need to feel lonely. I am finally home at last. <laughs> okay. Well, obviously you guys can tell we got the truck back. Oh, thank goodness. We're in Staunton State Park. Uh, it's up near where we used to live, near Bailey um, and Conifer area. And the kids are sledding and it's just a beautiful bluebird day as we would call it here. And man, it just, I can't, it doesn't get better than this. Oh, oh. Of all the magic places in the world I've been to, this is where my heart is. Oh, you know it's true no matter where. Could wear a blindfold no matter what I do, I'm coming home to you. And I 
Did you smell the trees yet? You're so crunchy. <laughs> Somebody's really loving this oh, I have returned to my native land. I have seen many places where the beauty never ends. Different cities, friendly faces, and perhaps I'm going back. But I don't have to be. <laughs> that was a good one, Chloe. most epic moonrise ever. Staying in the Denver metro area is kind of difficult pretty much any time of the year, uh, especially in the spring and summertime. We are here obviously in the dead of winter, so it's a little bit easier, but still we are having to hop between Chatfield State Park and Cherry Creek State Park. Unfortunately, the maintenance cost continued on. When we got back down from the mountains the next day, we realized that we had, uh, there was a slow leak in one of the tires. And when John went to Discount Tire to have it repaired, it turns out it was a large bolt that couldn't be repaired. Well, continuing the uh, cluster saga of all of the vehicles that we own, it seems there was a screw in the tire. So I took it in to our favorite discount tire place. They couldn't really fix it. They didn't have any tires that fit that same size. All your tread wear is a little on the low end. They told me initially in Nashville that we could probably make it all the way to Phoenix without too much of an issue, but then we would need to replace them then. Well, one of them went bad. I had to replace with a Michelin Defender tire, and so it didn't match anyway. I was gonna see if they could do the same with this one and then replace all of them in Phoenix, but we're just gonna replace them all now. So. They gave me this one back. So there's the plug. <laughs> Problem is, is when you put a little soapy water around it, it still leaks. Also, while doing the back brakes, because all the front had to be done at the dealership, I noticed that my... This is the back caliper. And they've got these nice little things that are supposed to flex. This one is sealed in there. The boot was cracked, so it got rusted. So I had to go to the dealership. Buy a new one of those. Why'd you have to go to the dealership? I had to go to the dealership because no AutoZone or O'Reilly's or Advanced Auto Parts or Napa or anybody that I could think of could have one in stock within the two days that I needed it before we leave town to head to Phoenix. So I had to go to the dealership and probably play, you know, two times what it was worth. <laughs> but whatever, it's here. The tires are gonna get fixed tomorrow. We're gonna have all new shoes on the truck. 
and then we should finally be able to roll out without any issues. <laughs> all in all, we had a wonderful time in Colorado despite all of the maintenancing things that we had, and it actually worked out nicely. We didn't have to be in Phoenix until January 10th, so we just spent extra time in Colorado fixing things up and exploring the mountains that we love so much. So in the end, it worked out, and then it was time to move across Colorado and pick which route we were gonna take. We decided to try and squeeze between two snowstorms and make it across I-70. So stay tuned for next week to see how that went. Thank you guys for joining so much. We love you guys. We hope you enjoy our story. We hope that you are out there doing your own unordinary path and getting after your dreams too. We'll see you out there. <laughs>